Hello pagans, witches, and spiritual seekers. I am Sarah, the Skeptical Witch, and thank you so, so much for joining me on my channel. I hope that you are having a lovely day wherever you are, whatever you're doing. Today, I just wanted to have a little bit of a chat about astrology and how I approach astrology as a self-proclaimed skeptic um, and what it means for me to incorporate astrology into my life as someone who doesn't necessarily, you know, completely believe in the literal truth of astrology. Since I was a kid, I've been pretty interested in astrology and learning about astrology. Um, my grandmother introduced this to me at like a pretty young age. She introduced me to a lot of kind of occult practices, including like tarot and numerology. Um, but astrology was the one that I was always like really, really interested in, and I developed um, a pretty big fascination with it. I would do a lot of research on like the various signs, uh, all the traits associated with them. Um, I would always read my horoscope when I was younger. I would like religiously <laughs> read it. As I grew older, I became more disillusioned with astrology, you know, I started thinking about it more critically and thinking, well, do the alignments of the planets and the stars really determine who we are? Do they really determine, like, what's going to happen to us? Can they really tell us that kind of thing? And I, I kind of decided that it didn't really fit in with a scientific understanding of the world. That said, even as I did become disillusioned with it and started to lose interest in it, I would always read my horoscope, like, you know, semi-regularly. That was something that never really stopped. And now that I've incorporated spirituality, contemporary spirituality, and witchcraft into my life, astrology has kind of found its way back in, in a pretty significant way. Um, I'm not, like, an astrologer by any means. I, I don't really understand a lot of what's going on with astrology. I think there's a lot of, like, complexities there that... I just haven't been able to wrap my mind around. But nonetheless, it's still something that I find really interesting and something that I really enjoy having as a part of my spiritual practice um, and incorporating into my witchcraft now. I think as it is with many things in witchcraft and spirituality, you don't necessarily have to wholeheartedly believe in something, have to believe in something uh, like literally for it to actually have meaning in your life and for it to be able to have an impact on you um, spiritually and just in your daily life as well. So I just wanted to outline a few of the ways that I use astrology as a skeptic and some of the ways that maybe you could as well if you're looking to incorporate it into your life more but you feel you know you don't really believe in it like wholeheartedly. So the first way that I use astrology as a skeptic is being able to take guidance from horoscopes. I don't necessarily like accept these horoscopes as being like literal truth or anything. I don't like follow them word for word. Um, I don't completely, you know, believe that the like movement of the stars, the patterns of the planets or whatever can somehow predict like how my day is going to go. I don't, I don't believe that. Uh, but what I do do is I use the horoscopes and the advice that's given in these just as a sense of like general guidance. So this is also how I use like tarot card readings and other forms of divination, um, just as kind of like a form of guidance and nudging my thinking in a certain direction so that I am focusing on areas of my life that maybe I wouldn't necessarily be focusing on otherwise. So for example, if I had a horoscope that said something like, be careful not to be too sensitive about something, uh, if I caught myself being overly emotional about something in my life, that would maybe help me take a moment and just like take a step back and think about, you know, why am I being overly sensitive here? Uh, what's going on? You know, it, it helps me kind of catch myself in those moments. Um, and it helps me do self-reflection and it helps me be open to that kind of self-reflexivity, which I think is really important, which I think, you know, all of us could always do with in our lives a little bit more. So the second way that I use astrology as a skeptic is looking at personality traits. Now, I don't believe that your sign, uh, you know, where the sun was, where the moon was, where how the stars were aligned, all the different planets, you know, how all that was looking when you were born. I don't think that that can dictate your personality. I don't think that, you know, gives you personality traits. I just don't really believe that anymore. 
But all of these, you know, astrological signs, where planets are in your birth chart, all of that, it is associated with particular traits. And I think that this can be really, really interesting for doing like some psychological work. And I think it can be interesting for getting to know yourself in a way. From a psychological perspective, uh, astrology is very much associated with what's called the Barnum effect or the Forer effect. So this is a psychological phenomenon where people find very high accuracy um, in personality descriptions that are supposedly tailored for them, um, you know, like a zodiac sign, but they're actually quite general in reality. So basically, people read meaning into things that they think are like tailored for them in some way. We can see this in studies where people are given like these personality traits, like these very vague kind of descriptions, um, and then told that these are associated with their astrological sign, with their zodiac sign. Um, and when people are told that, they're much more likely to identify with these vague traits than they would be otherwise. But really, this is just us finding meaning in things and us as like pattern-seeking animals trying to trying to like grasp onto some kind of meaning in that. So what I get out of this, what I kind of read from that is that, you know, basically anyone can identify with really any zodiac sign, any kind of vague personality traits from any sign, regardless of whether it's theirs or not. So really, even for skeptics, it would make sense that you would be able to identify with, you know, some parts of your sign, some kind of personality traits that are associated with your sign, even if you don't identify with all of them. So for example, my sun sign is Scorpio, which means that I am, you know, moody and secretive. And those are things that I do really identify with. Yeah, I'm moody and I'm secretive for sure. <laughs> my rising sign is Capricorn, which is associated with traits of like seriousness and ambition and that kind of thing. And those are traits that I totally like identify with as well and things that I think people definitely see in me a lot of the time. Uh, I think that, you know, people who don't know me very well would maybe guess that I was a Capricorn if they knew, <laughs> if they knew their uh, astrology. And then my moon sign is Leo, which is associated with like creativity and passion, but also being kind of egotistical and self-centered as well, which, you know, are all things that I do identify with as well. I, I definitely see these traits in myself, the good and the bad. But the thing is, for all the traits that, you know, do resonate with me coming out of these signs, there are just as many that don't, and just as many that I'm like, eh, nah, that's not really me at all, you know, things that I don't, don't really identify with as much. So as a skeptic, what I think it's kind of interesting to do here and what can be really beneficial is really just picking and choosing, right? Picking and choosing what traits from, you know, the signs that are in your birth chart resonate with you. Picking and choosing things that like you can find meaning in and things that you do kind of see in yourself, both in terms of like the positive and the negative. I think that in a way, like zodiac signs and astrology, this can be like correspondences in witchcraft. So correspondences are basically just things that stand in for other things. So particular like objects or ideas or symbols or whatever that can stand in for more complex ideas and things with like bigger meaning. Astrology and zodiac signs and everything can fulfill this role as well. The the signs, they do stand in for like bigger, more complex ideas, like these bigger personality traits, aspects of being that are kind of hard to like conceptualize quickly and that's where the signs can kind of just stand in for these bigger ideas and once you get to that point um, like this point of seeing signs as like correspondences as symbols for bigger ideas then you can start using them in really interesting and meaningful ways in this way I think that signs can be really archetypes like the signs really are you know, archetypes in a lot of ways and we can work with these archetypes in so many different ways even if you don't believe in like astrology and you don't believe the the stars the planets the sun and the moon dictate your personality you can still use the signs as archetypes for just getting to know yourself on a deeper and more profound level I think that signs can be really helpful for identifying the things that you admire about yourself, like personality traits that you see as being in like a really positive light, things that you really um, enjoy about yourself and want to accentuate further. You can use the signs to help you do that and work towards that. 
And I think at the same time, you can also use signs for identifying kind of negative personality traits and things that you know you need to work on uh, within yourself, things that you find kind of problematic. Um, and you can use the zodiac signs and astrology for helping you with like shadow work and helping you kind of work through these darker aspects of self. So once you start to kind of get an idea for how the signs can be used as symbols, as correspondences, as metaphors for more complex ideas, then you can start working them into spell work and ritual if that's something that interests you. Like any correspondence, you can use zodiac signs as ways of representing these more complex ideas that can be really helpful when you are doing like ritual and spell work. It's a way of kind of tapping into that unconscious kind of aspect of the mind in order to access areas of the psyche and make connections between the conscious and an unconscious mind um, in ways that, you know, maybe wouldn't be possible or wouldn't be as kind of meaningful outside of the like ritual or witchcraft context. For example, I recently did a spell on the uh, full moon, yeah the full moon in Capricorn that happened a couple weeks ago. Um, I did a spell around that that involved uh, kind of these two sides of my personality that I conceptualize as being the like Leo side, which is kind of the passionate, like artistic, creative side, um, the side that just wants to kind of like say fuck it to rules and just have fun, and then like the more Capricorn side of me, which I see as being the more serious, kind of down to earth, like hardworking side of myself. Um, I find that these two sides of my personality often clash a lot. And so I was doing this spell on the full moon using these archetypes, using these symbols as a way to uh, work towards finding balance and harmony and finding a way to synthesize these two aspects of my personality that do often seem to kind of fight. So basically it's breaking down these bigger, uh, more complex ideas and messages into much more manageable like bite-sized metaphors that we can make sense of and use in the moment and use uh, as a part of spell work. Another way that I use astrology as a skeptic is that I do kind of follow some like um, astronomological, is that a word? Astronomological? <laughs> some astrological, I guess, events, like the movements of the planets um, and the movement of the stars and kind of how the planets align with the constellations, how they align with one another, with the sun, everything like that. So I don't personally like understand really any of this like I would never be able to look at like a chart of the sky and tell you what's going on like what planets are aspecting what or what Jupiter's doing and what Neptune is up to like I don't know that personally um, but I like kind of reading about this from people who do know and listening to YouTube videos especially of um, people kind of talking about this and even though like I don't understand these things so much and I don't really believe that like the movements of the planets actually have any kind of tangible effect on our lives or any tangible effect on our emotions like in a kind of objective reality kind of standpoint. I do like incorporating this knowledge into my life and into my spiritual practice in a much more like psychological way and again to kind of give me something to focus on to think about right like for that particular moon cycle um, I'll listen to you know youtubers talk about what's going on I'll read like articles about um, what's happening with the planets, what's aspecting what, what constellation we're in right now and everything. And uh, I'll just kind of apply that to like my spirituality. So like my moon meditations, um, my moon journaling that I do, um, it might play a big role in ritual depending on what's going on, um, depending on whether it's kind of resonating with what's going on with me at the moment. So again, like reading daily horoscopes, weekly horoscopes, all that, it's just, it gives me something to focus on, something to think about. Um, just like nudging my thoughts in a certain direction um, and it helps me gain a little bit of perspective sometimes. And then finally, uh, the last kind of point I have to make about like using astrology as a skeptic. One of the ways that I do it is uh, using it for journaling prompts. So I think that you can use like the alignment of the planet, your horoscope, or just personality traits that you that are associated with your signs. All of these can make really good journaling prompts and can make really good, good jumping off points for getting to know yourself on a deeper level and just yeah like reflecting on you know your life on on whatever's going on um 
on your attitudes towards certain things, working through your emotions, um, and again, doing shadow work. I think that astrology can be really helpful for shadow work. It's definitely helped me uh, a lot in that, in that respect. It's interesting that when you are open to like the magical and the metaphysical and when you're open to things like astrology, things that aren't necessarily, you know, based in science or logic or reason, but that are kind of more woo-woo in a sense, when you're actually open to these things and you invite them into your life, you'll start to notice things that correlate with them more. So for example, I find that during Mercury retrograde, um, I experienced so many more like technological issues and just like breakdowns in communication, um, which are things that are associated with that planet going into retrograde. And I, I don't personally think that like it's actually because of the planet. I don't actually think that um, a planet moving backwards, you know, thousands and thousands of miles away is gonna have any tangible effect on like our technology or our ability to communicate. But it's still kind of like fun and interesting to make those connections. And I still like having that more, more magical layer that's kind of put onto daily life. So because I am open to things like astrology, because I'm open to things like magic and witchcraft, these things have kind of changed how I perceive the world. They've added extra dimensions of understanding for me um, in terms of how I like relate to and engage with the world. And I think that's fantastic and I really love that. And um, it's why I'm glad to have astrology back in my life. You know, even though I am a skeptic, it doesn't really matter because it doesn't really matter that I'm a skeptic in the end because it still has meaning for me and it still adds value to my life in some way. Thank you so, so much for joining me as I have rambled on about astrology here. Um, I hope that you found something interesting in this video at least. If you have anything to add, any of your own kind of ideas or thoughts on astrology, especially approaching it from like a more skeptical point of view, I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments. Um, yeah, I think it's something that's really interesting and something that I'm always really curious to learn more about, especially how other people approach astrology. So thank you so, so much. If you enjoyed this kind of content and want to see more about about skeptical witchcraft, skeptical spirituality, um, anything like that, just um, give me a like and a subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Bye!